video is going to guide guide you through the solutions for part A and part B. Over here, I have a graph of F, which is not given in the problem. We're just given the first derivative. But if you use uh, integration by parts, you can actually find the value of the original function. And if you put one in here for X, you'll find that you do get three. So the point one three is on this red graph. Point is for part A, how do you find the critical numbers and identify them as giving relative maximums or minimums? Well, we need to set the first derivative equal to zero, which was given. Uh, using the zero product property, if the product of two algebraic expressions equals zero, one of them has to equal zero or the other one has to equal zero. E to the X equals zero, never. So we don't have a solution from here, but when six X squared minus 5x equals 0, uh, we solve and find out that x is 0 or x is 5, 6. Now, we can use the first derivative test to find out whether those critical numbers give us relative maximums or relative minimums or neither. Um, if we <laughs> put those critical numbers on a little number line and then choose test numbers in each of the intervals created, for example, if we find f prime of negative 1, that means put negative 1 in here for x and 6x squared minus 5x e to the x, we get a positive number. And when f prime is positive, the original function is increasing. If we find use a test number between 0 and 5, 6, like 1 half, we find out that the first derivative is negative. So the original function is decreasing because uh, when the first derivative is positive, the slopes of the tangent lines are going uphill, and so is the original function. Slopes are downhill, the function is going down. And to the right of 5, 6, we might try f of 1, which we know is 3. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, f prime of 1 is e, which is greater than zero, so positive. So by looking at these arrows, first derivative test, we can see that there's a relative minimum at zero, and a, I'm sorry, a relative maximum at zero because we went from increasing to decreasing. Here's that relative maximum right here, horizontal tangent line, functions going from increasing to decreasing at zero. And at five, six, which is this point right here, the function's gone from decreasing to increasing, so there's a relative minimum at uh, 5, 6. If we wanted to actually find out the y-coordinates of those points, we'd plug those critical numbers into the original function, <coughs> which was not given to us as part of the, the original problem. Now, we since we have to find the points of inflection in part B, we have to find the second derivative using the product rule. Uh, I've got the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. I see an e to the x in each of these terms. So I factor out an e to the x and uh, combine the similar terms that remain inside these parentheses, 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. Same deal, we would like to know when does the second derivative equal zero? That's called the test for concavity. And it's similar to the, the first derivative finding critical numbers. This e to the x will never equal zero. But when does 6x squared plus 7x minus 5 equal zero? I use the split the middle technique to factor it. Could use the quadratic formula. Uh, if you go through this, you end up with x equals negative 5 thirds or x equals 1 half. <clears throat> Same deal. We pick, put those, those numbers on a little number line. Uh, and the sign of f double prime at each of these intervals will give us information about the concavity of the original function. Uh, to the left of negative 5 thirds, we might pick a test number like negative 2. F of negative 2, picture putting a negative 2 in for x. You see you get, of course, this first factor, e to the x, is always positive. And 
the second, this trinomial will be positive also. So to the left of negative 5 thirds, F double prime is negative, is positive. I think smiley face, positive. Uh, between negative 5 thirds and 1 half or negative, think of a frown. And to the right of one half, like F double prime of one is positive. So we've got smiley face concave up. <clears throat> so since the concavity changes at these points, these are points of inflection. And that's these blue dots in this diagram. See, we went from concave up to all of a sudden now the tangent lines are above the curve. Concave down until we get to this blue dot. Then the tangent lines start being below the curve or concave up for the rest of the time. Now, <clears throat> we could have found whether these the 0 and 5, 6 are relative maximums or minimums using the second derivative test by plugging the critical numbers into the second derivative. And f double prime of 0 is negative. So that means that the curve is concave downward at zero, but since the tangent line is horizontal, that gives us at zero, we've got a relative maximum, which is what we found using the first derivative test. Same deal for f five. Hey, there you go. I hope that helped. And uh, if you have any questions, post a comment.